has done great things. here and we want to get to know you better. So we'd like to ask you to go to our church website, goodnewschurch.life. In the bottom right-hand corner of the screen is a dialogue box. Anytime during the week, you can click on that, send us your contact information, and someone from our team will be in touch with you this week. We do want to make an announcement. Our um, One of our members, Liz Barrett, who is also our church office administrator, has taken a new job, and we wanted to just celebrate and send her off well. Um, if you know Liz, y'all, she has done an excellent job of being a church administrator. She's been with us for seven years and with three different pastors. But there's something so unique about her. Y'all, she has this incredible heart of mercy and compassion for every single person that comes through those doors, for every email, every call. She was so um, gifted to care for each and every one of those people. And so we know that God is going to use those giftings in her wherever she goes. And we're excited for her to shine his light in her new position. So let's go to 
the Lord in prayer, and then we'll continue in worship. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the people that you put in this place. God, we thank you for Liz. Lord, we thank you for the incredible ministry that she's done here, for the um, incredible woman of God that she is, and how the gifts and callings on her life are irrevocable, and that, Lord, you're going to use her to shine your light brightly in this new position to take that ministry out into the world, into dark places, Lord, and and hopefully share it with others. Lord Jesus, we thank you for her. We pray for her in this transition, and we bless her in this new job. Lord God, we also just acknowledge that we are here today, Jesus, because we want to know you. We want to be with you. We want to seek your face. Lord, there is a world that is in chaos outside of this this moment right here. But God, when we come and we are with you, we are on solid ground. We are on a firm, unshakable foundation. God, let us remember that it's you that we can cast our cares and our anxieties to because you care for us. God, would you be glorified? Would you be worshiped? Would you be lifted high today in our hearts? God, would our cups be filled by your Holy Spirit so that we can go out throughout the rest of the week and be a blessing to the world around us? We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh
As we move into this time of offering, we just want to thank you for your continued generosity and giving of your tithes and offerings each week. Because of you, we are able as a church to continue to support all of our local and global outreach partners, plus our missionaries around the world. So just a reminder of the three different ways that you can continue to give. First, you can go to our church uh, website, goodnewschurch.life. You can give on our church center app, or you can mail or bring a check right up here to church. So if you will bow your heads with me, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer over these offerings. Jesus, we praise you for what a wonderful savior you are. We hear your call to generous giving. In the generous way you meet our needs each day and in the peace you give, which passes all understanding. Having received so much, we offer what we have to you to use for your kingdom, our time, our talents, and our treasure. Please bless these gifts for the work of your church. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Well, good morning, church. Thank you so much. Well, as we get started this morning, I want to start by asking you just a simple question about, think back to one of the biggest mistakes you've ever made, or think back to the things in life you've done and you regret them probably more than anything else. And for some of you, you know, you can go to those one or two things pretty quick. And if I had to guess, I would bet for the majority of us, that thing that we did and that thing we regret somehow, some way involved a lack of patience. I bet we made a quick decision or we just thought, you know what, I'm not going to talk to anybody about this. I don't need any counsel on it. I don't need to, you know, pray about it. I'm not going to dig into scripture about this to confirm if this is the right path forward or not. I'm just, I'm just going to do it. And then we were like, that was a terrible idea. Shouldn't have done that. And for a lot of us, I think that's our story. And we look at that, and when we go back to those things, that we start to find that, and we look at that place, and we realize that had we had a little bit more patience, we probably wouldn't have done those things. And there's a little proverb in chapter 14, verse 29, it says, whoever is patient has great understanding, but one who is quick-tempered displays folly. Right? This sense that like whoever is patient has great understanding. And as we walk through this series on the fruit of the Spirit, we've called it doing the next right thing. And what is the next right thing for us? And what does that look like? And so I think when we have good understanding, we make good decisions about doing the next right things. But if we don't, and if we have quick temperedness, we begin to display folly. And so in the fruit of the Spirit, when Paul writes about these, he says, love, joy, peace, patience. And and sometimes that word patience, depending on the translation, will sometimes be the word forbearance. And that word forbearance, kind of a better way to understand forbearance or the way they talk about patience is long-tempered, right? The opposite of a short temper. This long-temperedness, this sense, this ability to be able to pause and to not react to the moment, but to really respond to the larger situation. And so as we think about that, right, and as we look at that, the best way that I can think to describe this or the best way I've seen this described is through, like, if you've ever been around, like, a teenage boy, you know they like firecrackers and to blow things up and, and that kind of stuff. And so if you think about a little black cat firecracker, right, that's short-tempered. You've seen somebody light them before, and they, the first thing you do after you light that wick is you throw it really quick because it's about to blow up. And you don't want it to blow up in your hand. That's short-temperedness, right? But when you think about dynamite, Dynamite is the kind of thing that you go and you think about where do I want to put this? And I'm going to put it in the place to do the most of whatever it is that I want it to do. And then we don't just, you know, light a match and run because because the impact of that is so much bigger. We run this long cord, like get really far away from it. We get to a safe spot to the thing that's where it's supposed to be to do the thing that we want it to do. And then we light it and we let it run that long wick. That's the difference, I think, between short-tempered, long-tempered, right? And we see one's really intentional, one's really reactive. We light it and we throw it away. And we can probably take a few minutes and think about ourselves and say, you know, just do I have this forbearance? Am I I short-tempered? Am I long-tempered? What triggers those kind of things? But as we think about that, this reality that the short-temperedness, the close-sightedness of it doesn't always help us make the most godly decisions, And so I want to play this little game with us. Um, If you look on your screens here, you're going to see something pop up, and it's going to be a really close-up shot of something. We're going to play a little game, see if you can figure it out. Then the next thing you're going to see is kind of a broader picture of it to be able to see what it is. So here's the first one. You just get a couple seconds here, okay, to look at this. And as you see that, right, you maybe know because this one has a little context clue of the color, and it's a little easier than the other ones. And so now you look at the whole picture of it, and you can see that it's a pencil, right? You can look at this other one, okay? You go into it, and you see this, and you get zoomed in real close at it, and you can see kind of the short-tempered version of the situation, and you can maybe make a guess or two about what that is and what's going on there, and you back up a little bit, and you see that it's a key. Here's a third, and this one's kind of funny because it's kind of gross, really. You look at this thing up here, okay, and you see what, what this is right here, and as you look at this thing, you probably don't think that looks real appetizing and like something you'd want to eat and that you'd pick as a fruit, right? But really, you grab that um, stem and you twist it off, it's the, the tip of an apple. And so when we see these things, right, really, really up close, we don't get the whole picture of what they are and the goodness of what they could be. And there's so many situations and so many circumstances in life, right, when we're patient and we have great understanding and we're long-tempered and we're willing to see the whole picture, oftentimes the microcosm of it makes different sense in different lights and different perspectives. And so I think for us as followers of Jesus, we want to live life not in response to the fickleness of our short-sighted feelings, but in response to the faithfulness 
of our God. We don't want to live in response to, you know, fickled feelings, but with faithfulness to a God who has proven himself faithful over and over and over again. And one of the challenges in our culture right now is we play that little picture game right there. And for a lot of us, like that just sums up life. We're having to make decisions with very little information and very little understanding. And we're having to try to figure out what's the right thing to do here. And we don't want to be short-tempered and we don't want to have to make these decisions, but that's the reality that we find ourselves in. And what I hope we take this morning away is this sense of like, how can we be more long-tempered, more graceful, more compassionate to those around us in this season? So we want to look at what does it mean to be a follower of Jesus and to have this forbearance, to have this patience, and how do we live that out well? And there's three things I want us to look at. First thing this morning is we want to be people who are patient with each other, okay? In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, it says, live in peace with each other. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive, encourage the disheartened, help the weak, and here's our word, right? Be patient with everyone. And who's everyone? It's everyone, right? It's not just the people we want to be patient with, but it's, but it's everyone, right? This long-tempered understanding, and I think what gets us that is when we understand the whole story. Now, a while back, um, I was talking to this realtor friend and she was talking about some difficult clients that she'd had and she started telling me the story about one in particular that was one of the most confusing complicated clients she'd ever had in her life and she said we would go into some houses and they would have like white countertops and this guy would be like oh we love white countertops these are the best and then like the next day they'd go into another house that had white countertops and the guy would be like oh we hate white countertops and she's like I just couldn't figure this guy out for anything and she said so finally a couple days after looking at all these houses she, she called him on one of these things and was like, listen, like, y- you know, you say you don't like this here, but you just liked it the other day. Like, there's a whole lot, lot of logic to what's going on here with, with your scenario. And she said, like, what, like, what's the deal? Like, what are you really looking for? And she said the guy kind of got embarrassed and, and he confessed up this story. And he said, well, when I was little, he said, my grandparents lived close enough to be able to walk to an ice cream store. And he said, I've always wanted a house where I could walk to an ice cream store. And he said, but I was a little embarrassed to just tell my wife, to tell my kids, and to tell everybody that I'm looking for a house that's, you know, just close to the ice cream store. And so once she said that to him, everything made sense, right? Because white counters look awesome when they're next to the ice cream store, and white counters look terrible when they're really far from the ice cream store. Now, it's kind of a dumb, you know, little story, but when we think about that in life, right, when we talk about some larger issues that are so, you know, complex for us as a culture right now, whether that's racism, whether that's politics, whether that's education, whether that's masks, whether that's whatever you want that to be right now, I think so often we want to make judgments and we want to react in a short-tempered way on the information that is right before us. But what does it look like for us to do the next right thing, to have the patience, to have the forbearance, to step back and look at other people's opinions, look at other people's perspectives, not in that short moment, but in the larger perspective of their entire narrative of their life. Because people have been exposed to different things in different ways that make the small things look very different depending on the journeys that we've walked. And you see, when we understand that, when we're patient and we begin to have that great understanding, we can step back and we can show that patience and forbearance to everyone. You know, see, the thing that's hard about that, the things that's challenging about this is in order to get the bigger picture is it requires a relationship, right? That's more than just an offhanded comment online. That's more than just a dismissive whatever and walking away from someone. That takes real guts to dig in and to get to know and to understand and to learn and to grow and to be able to understand broader perspectives and why someone may feel the way they feel about something that's different than you. And when somebody feels a little bit differently about something and we just immediately want to write that off as wrong, I think that's a little short-tempered of us. But what does it look like for us to have patience and understanding? Because our, our understanding of things have changed. And so how can we enter into those situations with grace in this way of Jesus that calls us to relationship, that calls us to grace, and that allows us to show that long-temperedness because it has been shown to us? All right, second thing I would say is that we want to be people who wait patiently for God's timing. Now, so often we want to um, make it our timing and not God's. And King David writes in these Psalms in so many different ways in the book of Psalms. And you hear so many of the inside of his heart and the depths of his journey with God. 
And in Psalm 40, he's writing, he writes from this place of kind of this long perspective. He's been through a lot of things. He's seen a lot of things at the time of the writing of this psalm. And there's some wisdom wrapped up in it through the journey that he has walked with God through his life. And listen to these words in Psalm 40 as he writes them. He says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He says, he lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire, and he set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. So he didn't stand on fickle feelings, but on this foundation of a faithful God. And he says, he put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to God. Many will see and fear the Lord and will put their trust in him. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, who does not look to the proud, to those who turn aside to false gods. It says, many, Lord my God, are the wonders you have done, the things you have planned for us. None can compare with you. Were I to speak and tell your deeds, they would be too many to declare. You see in that psalm, we see that David makes this choice. Right? He says he's not going to base his response on feelings, but he's going to base it on the foundations of a faithful God. And he says, you put a new song in my heart. You have shown me a better way. And then at the end of that, I love that he gets to this place where he begins to talk about God's faithfulness in the past. And you see, what he does is he backs off that one narrow picture of the moment and can step back and to see the whole picture and the larger narrative and is reminded that God has been faithful to him in the past, that God has been faithful to him in the present, and that God is going to be faithful to him in the future. You see, when he understands that and when he gets that, it begins to change the whole perspective. And it begins to change everything, right? And we've heard the phrase before, you can't worry and worship at the same time. And so he makes this point to say, in the midst of this, and I think a lot of us find ourselves in that place that David finds ourselves, where life is difficult, there's a situation, there's a circumstance right now, that it is just not what we want it to be. And there's this temptation to feel that because it's not what we want it to be, that God is not working in it. But I want to tell you that I believe that just because sometimes God feels silent, it doesn't mean that God is absent. I want to share with you a great little story of that this morning. So just about two years ago, um, Hurricane Michael hit the coast, and our church got ready to respond to that in a lot of different ways, and many people from our church are from a town called Mariana, which is about 50 miles north of Panama City. And it's not very often that storms will, you know, do the kind of damage they did in Mariana as Hurricane Michael did. And so several folks from our church who are from that area decided that after the storm, they wanted to go up and serve some families and people in that community. So they take off and they they go up there and there was no real plan. I mean, the whole situation was chaos at the time. And so they were just going up to houses and saying, hey, do you need help? And so our team that was here, some people from Mariana, stumbled up on this house of a couple named Don and Cheryl. Now, Don and Cheryl had a big tree that fell right down in the dead center of their house. And they were so frustrated because they had just bought a new lot and they were getting ready to build this retirement dream home that they were going to move into and sell the house that now had a big tree in the middle of it. And they had some things that they could spare from the house, but if they didn't get them out soon, the rain was going to get in there and kind of ruin more stuff. So when our team showed up, they said, what can we do? They said, we got to get all this stuff into storage. So our team just helps them unload this stuff, puts it in these moving trucks, gets it all into the storage unit, and gets it all locked up. Well, Don and Cheryl start looking for a place to rent in Mariana, where they're from, and there weren't a whole lot of houses for rent. So it forced them to come down here to the coast, and they were able to rent a condo down in Miramar Beach. And for the next four or five months, they attended here at Good News with us. And now what was happening a lot during those four and five months is we were involved a lot of different ways in hurricane relief. And one of the things that we did is we asked for money. And we'd sent that money to two different piles, right? We had one pile of money that was going to these large organizations that, like a group called UMCOR. And one of the things UMCOR can do is they can come into these towns and they have these home plans that they can build smaller homes for about forty, forty-five thousand, dollars sometimes $50,000, and they can make them really great functional homes for families who are in tough situations. And so we gave the money to them, but we also kept this other pile of money that was just for immediate needs, you know, just people we encountered, people who were struggling, and we wanted to be able to help them in that moment. And we were like, okay, you know, we we got cash, and we're here to help, and we're here to serve you in that time. And so between these piles of money, I mean, it it was significant money, hundreds of thousands of dollars. And so as time went on, um, Don and Cheryl, they moved back to Mariana, and requests for the money started to dry up, and we had about 40 some thousand dollars left, and we were trying to figure out how can we best use this money. And so there was a pastor's meeting up in Mariana, and so I went up to the church there one evening, and I met with their pastor, a guy named Nathan Atwood, and he started showing me around their church. 
And he took me down into the basement of the church and he said, so what we've done here is we've converted the basement of our church into a dormitory and teams are coming from all over the country to spend time here and build houses that, and, that UMCOR is building. And he said, so they're going and working on these projects and helping out in all these different ways. And he says, it's turned into this beautiful ministry where we've been able to open up our church and allow people to come in, stay here and go and work on these homes for people impacted in our community. And I was like, that's really cool. And so as I was driving home that night, I just kind of felt God, you know, speak to my soul. He was like, y'all just need to give that money to this church so that they can help these people who are on the ground in this place right now. So I called our team together that oversees those funds. And I was like, here's what I think we should do. They were all like, let's do it. So we write a check. We take it up to Mariana. And Wally, who's on our staff, delivered it up to the church there by hand, drops off a check for a little over $40,000. Well, a couple days later, our friends, Don and Cheryl, who had moved back into their home that had been rebuilt, and now it was kind of their dream home that was all built out, came into the same church that we dropped our check off. And they said to the pastor, they said, hey, we had bought this lot. And we felt like we were going to use it over here to build our dream home, but our home got rebuilt and we rebuilt our dream home on our old lot. And we felt like God has been so good to us and been so gracious to us through this whole season. We just want to give this lot to the church to put a home on it. Can you do that? And he was like, yeah, funny enough, they're about $45,000. And we got a check yesterday for $45,000. And so Nathan called me and he said, would you mind if we took this money and built a home for a family in our church? And we said, God bless you, build them a house as fast as you can. And I love that story because it's this sense of like in the moment, none of it makes sense. In the moment, we don't see how God's working. When that tree is falling in their house and our team shows up at the door, we don't understand where the good is in that, but yet we serve this gracious God who makes all things new, who pulls beauty from ashes, and who is working despite times when it doesn't look like it and it doesn't feel like it. And so the choice for us is, are we going to live based on fickle feelings or on the foundation of the faithfulness of a God who has shown himself faithful to us in the past and the present, and we believe it to be in the future. So if you find yourself in that place this morning, just feeling like God isn't there, God isn't working, God isn't in this, I just hope you can look at that story. I hope you can look back at your story and see that just because it doesn't feel like it doesn't mean it's not true. And what would it look like for us to choose patience and to take our eyes off that short-sighted moment and to step back and believe that the Holy Spirit is working and moving all around us and we're not going to choose worry, but we're going to choose worship in the midst of those difficult times And we're going to press forward with the patience that God is for, with, and in us and working to move us forward. Number three, this sense that um, we're patient because God is patient with us. And in 2 Peter chapter 3, he says, But don't forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, here's our word again, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. You see, that's the beauty of this fruit of the Spirit, right? Is that when we stay close to the vine, and the vine, what comes off the branches and comes off the roots is the fruit of the foundation. You see, when we build our lives on the reality of Jesus and we commit ourselves to that and we begin to walk faithfully with Jesus and do the next right thing, the next right thing, the next right thing, over time, our lives begin to look more and more and more like the lives of Jesus. And we begin to show that patience that he showed to his disciples who seemed to mess it up at every turn. And we begin to show that patience with so many of us who seem to mess it up in so many ways. But yet we have a God who is faithful and who is patient with us. And so can we be that to others? And so this question we keep asking at the end of all these talks of the fruit of the Spirit, right, is what's the next right thing? And so for some of us, I think that means we come to admit and come to repentance, right? And we admit our brokenness and we say, you know what? The fruit of my life is not what I want it to be. And so I want to connect to something that's deeper and even more beautiful. And we want to believe the truth of the gospel. And we want to commit ourselves to this way of Jesus. And we want to move forward doing the next right thing. For some of us, maybe we need to show patience to someone. And we need to begin to pray that God would give us the patience and give us the the perspective of not just the moment, not just that one conversation, not just that one offhanded remark they made, but that we could step back and see the larger picture and the larger story and that it would just open up grace out of our hearts. And finally, I would say this, maybe the next right thing for some of us is 
as we walk through the midst of a season that is really difficult and really challenging and things don't make sense and it doesn't feel like God is with us, that we would choose worship. And we would not let our fickle feelings drive our decisions and drive our worship, but that we would choose to believe in a firm foundation and choose to worship a God who has been faithful to us over and over again. So what does that look like for you? What's the next right thing? And I pray that you would just believe and know with everything in you that God is with you, that God is for you, that God is in you. And that we would not get caught up in these tight little understandings of things, but that we would step back and have that broad perspective and that we could be patient because God has been patient with us. So may we be that. May we be that kind of people. May we go forth and bring that light into places of so much darkness. And may we go and may we bring joy where there's so much discontent in our world right now. And can we believe with everything in us that we're not going to choose to follow our feelings, but we're going to choose to make decisions based on the firm foundation of the reality that God is with, for, and in us. Amen. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. church, we thank you for joining us this morning, and we pray God's blessing over you and over your family and that you'd receive this benediction. God, we ask that you'd send us out to go and to be patient to those around us as you have been patient with us. And so help us to see the bigger picture. Help us to step back and to grow our perspective and to see the world the way that you see it, full of grace, compassion, love, and hope. And we pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next week.